Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to yet another GR Corolla video. In today's video, it's all about intercoolers. Over the past couple of days, we have been testing four or five different aftermarket intercoolers. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I definitely regret not buying an aftermarket intercooler earlier. Our turbo car probably could have made so much more horsepower if we would have just went with a bigger intercooler. Lesson learned. And uh, today's video, we have so much information to go over. We're gonna go over all the price points. We're gonna go over how effective each intercooler was at a tackling heat soak. We also are gonna give you our opinion on what you guys should buy for your car, whether it's a street car or one that's gonna go full track mode. Let's not waste any more time. Let's go over to the shop and start talking about intercoolers and let's get right into the video. So, like I said, today we are going over intercoolers. We have an entire table full of intercoolers sitting here in front of us. And uh, over the past couple of days, we have been testing them one after another. And then we were doing three or four pulls with them on the dyno to kind of take a good average on how effective they were. We have this nice fancy whiteboard here behind us with all that information. And we are gonna go over that in just a second. But first, we're gonna kind of talk to you guys a little bit about what should make a good intercooler. We got Dave here. Dave, you wanna walk us through, first of all, for the people who don't know, what does an intercooler do? It cools the air compressed by the turbocharger before it hits the engine. As you compress air, it heats up. Uh, we gotta remove that heat because cooler air is denser and air density uh, equates to more horsepower. If you guys watched our last video, we talked about downpipes and we compared different downpipes and Dave had kind of talked to us a little bit about what makes a good downpipe. He mentioned that your motor is kind of like an air pump. The more efficient you can get air in, the more efficiently you can get air out. In turn, the more efficient your motor will be, the more power you'll make. Now, when it comes to air, like Dave said, we do have a turbocharged motor. When you turbocharge or compress air, it gets a little bit hotter. To cool down the air, you use something like an intercooler. So it's a heat exchanger, right? Hot air from the turbo goes in here. Uh, cool air from driving down the road kind of blows past these fins. Uh, the hope is to exchange the heat so the air coming out of the back of here is hotter and the air going into the engine is cooler. So we have four aftermarket intercoolers sitting here in front of us. Starting over here on our left, we have a PWR kit. Next up, we have the CSF or Jackson Racing intercooler. We also have the OTL or off the line. And then we also have, last but not least, the big dog, the STM. We're gonna kind of walk through each intercooler and what they came with in the kit. And then we will end up going over to the data that we got from all the testing that we did. So starting off with the PWR. It's great if your car has been in a front end collision or something, or you're running so much boost that you push this plastic intake apart. Um, otherwise, on a modified car, I just, I don't wanna run it. It is a nice product, it's quality, but it doesn't cool the air nearly enough for a modified car. We actually use this one on the race car. That's why it has these little custom brackets on here. Uh, you guys can actually see back there, that little black oil cooler that's hanging there. Uh, that oil cooler mounted on top of here, so we actually made like a custom little bracket set up for it. Um, we ran this on the race car when it was running that 450 horsepower. And I'm gonna be honest, like I said in the intro, I regret not going with a better intercooler earlier. So next up, we have the almighty, the huge hype all over the internet, the CSF Jackson Racing Intercooler, the double stack unit. So I'm looking at it right now. Uh, first thing I notice is the silver paint. Uh, maybe that's to prevent corrosion, um, road debris from damaging it or something. Um, probably not something I would have done, but you know, it's fine. Why is the paint not something you would do? I, I feel like, um, you know, maybe it will be a heat transfer inhibitor or, you know, maybe they've done their homework and it is like a uh, non-thermal barrier paint. I don't really know. I prefer the raw aluminum intercoolers, um, not just because they look cool, but I think they have a better heat transfer ability. This does have a bigger inlet and outlet and these hoses adapt to it. Potential issue is if you get a tear in one of these, you have to order one from the manufacturer. You can't just go down to your local speed shop and get a replacement intercooler booth. So you wanna just show those clamps quick because they are yeah. a little bit different than your average kind of worm clamp. Yeah, they have this uh, the metal shell inside of them. This one's been taken apart. I think this kind of helps with more even clamping force distribution. However, we did still have some issues with the intercooler boots blowing off. 
at 30 pounds boost. Overall though, you think the Jackson Racing Cooler is a decent setup? Yeah, it pretty much almost doubles the surface area for the heat exchanger that you have. No modifications necessary, it bolts right on. Up next, we have the OTL or off the line intercooler. This is the cheapest intercooler that we have sitting here on the table. Very high quality, uses, like Dave said before, a raw aluminum finish. This one is not painted. I like the fact that it has what appear to be very nicely formed and designed cast end tanks. And being able to bolt it on directly with the factory mounts, you do need to take the Rubber insulators off the stock intercooler, I think for like that. all yeah. of these, all three of these ones. So not a surprise there. The inlet and outlet, um, they're small. They're the same size as the stock intercooler and they use the stock intercooler piping, but for $5.99, maybe that's not a problem. Last but not least, we have the big boy, the STM intercooler. Now, I just got off the phone with the owner of STM because I asked him, I was like, hey, I'm gonna make this video about intercoolers. They sent me this intercooler about three or four weeks ago, calling it a prototype kit, and I wanted to make sure that I got my facts right. This one MSRP is for around 1,500 bucks. You can tell it's the biggest one that we have on the table. The most expensive one we have on the table, and like we're gonna talk about in just a second, the one that performed the best sitting here on the table. This one has a whole bunch of pros over the other three or four, but you know, it is expensive, all right? Right off the bat, it is expensive. I can tell you this is the one that we are gonna be using on our race car with our bigger turbo because it performed that well. And uh, I was honestly very impressed with it. And when I tell you that I regret not buying one, I regret not buying this one. I wish we would have bought this way sooner. Uh, yeah, hands down, it's the best one. If price is no object, right? If yep. you're looking for a value intercooler, if you have a stock turbo, one of the other ones is gonna do best. But even just looking at this core, look at this crazy fin design. They're not just straight jagged fins. They're like kind of curved over and each one, it, it almost looks like it's hand built. This one also doesn't use the stock mounting system. You can tell by the, uh, the big old billet kind of CNC bracket that it has sitting up here on the top. And then Dave's got the other two little CNC brackets that it comes with kind of to mount down here. And they actually fit really well for an aftermarket intercooler kit. I was very, very surprised. It does require bending of the radiator support on the car, but so minor, if you didn't know what you're looking for, you'd never know. So the tubes that are welded to the backside of the intercooler and just the size that they are and how far they go back on this one, it helps you install it because you're not trying to tighten a worm clamp between the radiator and the car's radiator support where you can't get your hands in, you can't get a screwdriver, you have to use like a ratcheting uh, electric wrench. Yeah. Now, we have talked about all these different intercoolers, we've kind of touched on the price point, we kind of touched on how effective they are, but we have a whiteboard over here with all the information. Dave, you want to give us a little bit of breakdown on, uh, on what we found. So maybe starting at the price, um, obviously OTL is a winner, right? As far as aftermarket intercooler, I think it is the least expensive one on the market. We have a data point, uh, average degrees rise over one pull. And we tested this on our dyno. They're all third gear pulls and we tried to keep the temperature as even as possible. Uh, but between 75 and 85 degrees ambient, the, the STM was tested on the hottest day, which is perfect because we knew it had a, a size advantage, a volume advantage. The stock one, 24 degrees on one third gear pull. It's crazy how much these cars heat soak right off the bat, right from the factory. So it is cool to see at least we got a measurement reading of it and kind of can see the difference between a stock OEM part versus kind of these other few. Because even, I mean, even the, the cheapest OTL one, I mean, that's a huge difference between five degrees over one pull and 24 degrees over one pole. I mean, that's that's insane. Yeah. We also put a data point for all three poles. And now uh, you might notice that the math doesn't really add up because we got one pole here, 24, and three poles for 48. Um, well, there's a little bit of difference here because some of the intercoolers continued to heat soak between the poles and some of them cooled off a little bit, um, even going back to back. And all three dyno poles were back to back. We did not give it any cool down time. Yep. And that kind of gives you this next number where OEM, you're looking at 48 degrees. Jackson Racing, CSF, you're looking at 16 degrees. 
The STM, of course, is the winner in this category at nine degrees Fahrenheit of rise. And then the OTL is at a 19 degree rise. It is interesting though, Dave brought this up when he was writing down this data. If you go purely off of our data done by three pole average, it's interesting because the OTL intercooler has a better, technically a better or a lower rise than the CSF over one pole. But over three poles, the CSF ended up being a little bit better. Now, this is only three degrees. I mean, there's a difference between <laughs> literally three degrees between the intercoolers, but it was an interesting data point that Dave pointed out. Of course, when you make a modification to your car, you're looking for it to make more power. We also kind of guessed on average the horsepower gain that we had. And we, I know we saw gains. You wanna kind of dive into that a little bit? Yeah, um, so I do wanna say that all this testing was done on 91 no ethanol. And we call it ACN 91, even though we're not in Arizona, California, or Nevada. It is the worst trash fuel that we can get around. It comes from the Senex station and it is super knock happy. Um, so all these poles were just kind of scaled back, turned down, 29 pound target falling to 22 pounds at red line. Um, and there's something to do with flow on these intercoolers we'll talk about in a little bit. But our baseline was an average of 260 wheel horse and 295 wheel torque uh, over the course of three poles back to back. The CSF right off the bat, five wheel horse, five wheel torque. The STM, nine wheel horse, two wheel torque. Um, definitely the winner in the horsepower category, not in the torque category. OTL, eight wheel horse and nine wheel torque, won the torque for sure. Why might that be? Uh, it could just come down to the size of the intercooler uh, inlet and outlet and potentially posing that restriction and just spiking up the torque or spiking the boost. I'm not really sure. I don't think it's worth going down that rabbit hole <laughs> and completely dissecting it. All of these aftermarket intercoolers flowed so much better than the factory one that we ran into valve float with each kit. <laughs> yeah. The STM, by far, we ran into the most valve float, and that's not saying anything bad about the product itself, it's just the way that we tuned the car, figuring for the stock intercooler, and ran that same exact tune without changing anything with these different intercoolers. So I would have definitely pulled back boost a little bit above 6,000 RPM to circumvent that. I mean, you, you kind of said like, it's not, it's not saying anything bad about these intercoolers. It's actually almost, you know, a compliment because with it valve floating up high in the higher RPMs, that's almost saying that the motor is more efficient with the intercooler. Um, so the intercooler is allowing it to be a little bit more efficient, allowing it to run a little bit more boost, in turn, allowing it to valve float a little bit more. Like Dave said, on the stock intercooler, we run no valve float at all. Honestly, these motors can take a lot more than the valves can, or the valve springs can, I should say. In terms of intercoolers, you know, when we talk about which one's the best, we got daily driver, we got track setup. Of course, we all kind of know the winner for the track setup. It's the one that we're gonna go with. No matter what, STM, if you have a bigger turbo on your car, go with the STM kit. It's worth it. The intercooler piping is awesome quality. And of course you guys saw, I mean, this, these numbers are insane. Two degrees over one pole and like nine degrees over three straight poles. Imagine doing like 15 poles right in a row, which is what you're doing on a racetrack. So for race car, 100%, go with the big boy, the STM. For a daily driver though, what do you think? What do you think the best option for a daily driver would be? Uh, daily driver, if you're looking for value, is gonna be the OTL. Um, I have recommended the CSF to a ton of people. For the price point, OTL's gotta be. Other than the price point, both intercoolers are really awesome construction. They fit great. They are very, very efficient, but the price point is hard to beat. The OTL is right around 600 bucks and the Jackson Racing or CSF is right around 900. So it's hard to say. Of course, if you like the CSF, you like the look of it, you like the gray, the CSF also comes in black. So if you like the black and you wanna go out with a little bit, little bit more of a murdered look, of course you can go with that. That is kind of all the information that we have for the intercoolers for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys kinda of got a decent amount of information and can kind of narrow down your pick on which intercooler you guys are gonna get for your car. With that being said, 
This is gonna be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please go down below. We have a crazy surprise coming for the next video. So be sure, hit the subscribe button. And if you guys have any questions, we went over a bunch of information, a bunch of different brands, and a bunch of different stuff on the whiteboard. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. I love talking to you guys down there. This video is officially over, and we will see you guys in the next one. Peace. All righty, so if you guys are watching this, that means that you watched all the way to the end of the video, and we really appreciate your guys' support. And here is your sneak peek of what is coming up in the next video. Now you guys know that we have my mom's GR Corolla. It's a 2023 Circuit Edition. This is the car that we we're doing all of the intercooler testing on. We also have what used to be our race car. This is our original 2023 GR Corolla that we've been modifying for over a year now. And I say used to be our race car because just behind you guys, we have our big announcement. And that is that we bought a third GR Corolla. And here she is, our 2024 Circuit Edition. Now, this isn't just any GR Corolla. If you guys remember the infamous money shifted GR Corolla that Toyota quoted over $42,000 worth of damage. This is the car from all those stories. And on Friday, our video will be released about us picking this thing up. So you guys be sure to subscribe. I appreciate your guys' support through everything. And we will see you guys on Friday. Peace.